Good morning and welcome to worship. Good morning to those gathered here at Deception Bay Uniting Church today and those of you who we know will be watching online later. Blessings to all. Our notices for this morning. First of all, at the Deception Bay Baptist Church in Main Terrace, diagonally opposite the Woolley Shopping Centre, there's going to be a combined service at five o'clock tonight, a combined Pentecost service where many churches will be taking part. And our own Pauline is uh, involved in part of the prayer life of tonight's service. So we look forward to that. Anyone that would like to come would be good. 5 p.m. tonight. Helping Hands, if we meet again on Friday afternoon. Last fortnight, that was when we were able to package up for Mission Australia and those quilts were all delivered uh, during the week. So they've gone and we'll get people to package up the other quilts for Communify this Friday. So it's so wonderful to be able to offer this blessing to others around us. Ladies Bible study is 10 o'clock on Tuesday and of course all are welcome. The day camp for the presbytery will be held at uh, Pine Rivers Uniting Church. If you have grandkids or neighbours or whatever, it is an awesome four days, it really is. The worship time where kids are involved, the music, the rock climb, or the wall climbing, they make gunyas for their their, their time out space and all the rest of it. It really is wonderful. So if you know anyone who would like to be involved, you can let me know, um, but there you, you do have to register online these days. Okay, now our prayer focus for this week, I know our prayer focus, yes, is local schools, and that's the aspect that Pauline will be focusing on uh, in the life of the service. Uh, tonight. Now it is the third Sunday so of course it is birthday. Al come on you wanted this song. Today is not only the birthday uh, 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 celebration of birthdays in our lives but it's also of course the birthday of the church and I think we should thank Jenny so much for the card she sends out because each of us when it comes to our month it mightn't come on the right day but the postie doesn't always come on the right day either but to know that the church family is thinking of you and that you get a card so yeah I wish Jenny was here but she does have prior obligations today. So let's sing the birthday song. It's your birthday, it's your birthday, so have a happy day. You're getting kinder, you're getting wiser, you're getting better every day. Jesus loves you, Jesus loves you, and that is what we say. Have a happy birthday, and God bless you. And afterwards, you'll be able to share in some church's birthday cake over your tea and coffee.
thank you, Paul, for that. In order to uh, be able to do worship leading, <coughs> excuse me, I uh, at the minute can't write very efficiently, so I did have to resort to uh, aid from a lovely minister who has now passed on called Maura Laidlaw. Uh, Glenn Mulcahy, when he was our supply minister, he put us on to some of Moira's work. And so I do have to confess to you that the words, I've always loved the way she puts her liturgy together. She sounds just like us. So today it's not my words, but Moira's through me. Our call to worship, which follows on from Paul's video. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together, just like us, in one place. And suddenly from heaven <clears throat> there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. This is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. <clears throat> your young men shall see visions and your old men will dream dreams. Even my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. And of course you'll recognise those as words from Acts num, chapter 2. And so as we talk about the tongues of fire coming, I invite you to stand as we sing what I thought was a song that we all, an old hymn that we all knew, but we do come from different denominations that come into this place here. But you will pick it up easily because the words are perfect. Oh, breath of life, come through me. <laughs>
and taps underground stores of life-giving water. So the wind of God's spirit fills us and refreshes us. As the fire renews the bush by bursting open the seeds of life, so the fire of God's spirit brings renewal to our lives. Wind and fire, symbols of energy and power. Holy Spirit, source of our energy, and power sweep into our lives this day that we may experience your refreshment your renewal and your life amen before we sing the next song i invite michelle if she would come forward what we talked about during the week was to have some sort of symbol for us not quite as dramatic as what paul showed us but the fact that in our lives the Holy Spirit is so important to us. And so I invite Michelle to light the Christ candle. It will light. And as we sing the next song, Refine as Fire, My Heart's One Desire, I invite you all, if you would like to come up, if it's a little bit hard to come up, Michelle, maybe you could light our candle for people. Michelle will stay up here um, during this time. So we'll remain seated as we sing Refine as Fire and feel free to make your way up to light a candle and it'll then just be placed in the wreath.
always room for one more, are you? And by doing all that and singing those words, it leads us into our prayer of confession. So today's prayer of confession will be read alternatively. I will do the first bit and you get the bit with the dark lines, the dark words. So let us pray together our prayer of confession. God of power, you have sent the spirit of love. You have sent the spirit of joy. <clears throat> you have sent the spirit of peace. <laughs> you have sent the spirit of patience. You have sent the spirit of kindness. You have sent the spirit of goodness. You have sent the spirit of faithfulness. You have sent the spirit of gentleness. You have sent the spirit of self-control. Gracious and merciful God, grant us your forgiveness and your love so that we may truly care for one another. And our assurance based on 2 Corinthians. Those who are in Christ are a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, with whom we have been reconciled through Christ. Thanks be to God. And now I invite you to just turn to someone near you, behind you or around you as we pass the peace. The peace of the Lord be with you and the response is also with you. Thanks, Michelle. It's not that the spirit has left us, it's just that we're worried about causing a little bushfire. <laughs> so let's quietly sit and sing 
Spirit of the Living God. <laughs> who still like a story. The story is based on a, an accompanying part of liturgy for this week, and it's based on Corinthians 12, where Paul was writing to the Corinthians, who started off really good in their, in their Christian journey, and then you know how things pop up and there were divisions and unhappinesses, and he's wrote and said, now look, you're like a body. Imagine your body. What have you got? What makes it up? And we start with a head. We've got eyes, ears, a mouth, arms, they're really good, legs, hands and feet. Can each part work without the other well? And the answer is no. And so this is what Paul was just using something they could look at each other and say, how does this work? Last week, our grandson, Carson, was really excited. His basketball team was in the inter-school uh, finals last week. And he, you know, they'd worked hard for this, and as well as that, he got a day off school. So what's, what's not to love about being in the finals? Yeah, but the afternoon before, he fell during the practice. And unfortunately, he sprained his ankle. So he was most unimpressed, I can assure you, because instead of heading off the next day bright and early in the bus, he was laid up with his leg up in ice. He had an x-ray and so, look, nothing was drastically wrong, but he did miss something he really, really wanted to be a part of. But I said to him, well, I can identify you with you on that one. Because a couple of, well, two months ago now, when I had my shoulder operation, it didn't turn out quite as I was expecting. And so from that time, I haven't been able to, to write, to cut up a piece of steak, to do lots of things. But I have learned something amazing, lots of amazing things. First of all, my left hand that really did nothing in the past has learned so many new skills, which is quite Wonderful. And even the cake that uh, you've got for morning tea, I was able to get it to a certain point. But then I had to do something that I have to do a lot. And I realised the importance of my mouth. 
Now I know you all know I talk a lot. That's okay. I forgive you. But this time I found that by using my mouth and one hand, you can hmm, open a bag of salad. Now sometimes the leaves fling out all over the bench. Sometimes I still can't get them out. And then I have to do something else. I have to use my mouth again, not to rip open the rest of the packet, but to call on Doug and say, I can't get it. So along comes my other pair of hands. <coughs> and that's been really, really lovely. <coughs> so that's not where we're going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> so the fact is that each of us, we all have body bits that don't work. Some have eyesight problems, some have hearing problems. But do you know what? By working together, this is what our various parts, we can still function and, and worship God in the way that he wants us to do. So Paul went on and said to the Corinthians, now look, you are the body of Christ. Each of you is different. Some of you are arms, some of you are legs, some of you are hearts, whatever it may be. But each of us is dependent on each other to worship God and be a meaningful, meaningful group in the life of our world, in the life of our communities, in the life of our families. He said to them, you are the body of Christ. And so I can say to you today, you are are the body of Christ with the bits that might be wrong, the bits that are great. Let's worship God together this day. And the song I found to accompany this story is a, a beautiful little one sung by some kids from a choir in the Philippines. And they're singing to us, we are the body of Christ. So please enjoy. that she's unable to come today to bring us the word. She loves to read the Bible reading for us. Uh, she's got a, a bad cough and couldn't come. So Doug is going, she said, don't take me off the roster. So I just moved Doug up a little bit so we can put Hazel back down. <coughs> and then, of course, 
Graham, our wonderful friend Graham, is bringing us our message for today. The reading for today is from Acts 2, verses 14 to 21. Entitled Peter Addresses the Crowd. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully so that I say to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. He said, In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us in Australia to come to churches and particularly this con congregation. Today we ask your spirit to rest with Graham and we look forward to your word through him and that it, we may understand your message. Amen. Good morning, everyone. <coughs> you uh, you probably figured out by now that today is Pentecost Sunday. And when I say Pentecost, I wonder what comes into your mind. Probably something similar for all of us and something we've heard for a long time. It was the time of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and the beginning and birth of the church, Christian church. And that's what I've understood pretty much all my life. So I, I went to Acts chapter 2 about a month ago, and I only got a few, verse, uh, a few words. And when Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. I thought, hang on. Is Pentecost something that already existed before the day we've been thinking of? And when I looked it up, it certainly was. It was a, a Jewish feast, also known as the Feast of Weeks. Now, I don't want to pretend I know anything about Greek, but the word Pentecost, comes from Greek and means 50th, and in this case, the 50th day. And we might wonder, well, why is that significant? Well, <clears throat> way back in the Old Testament, back in Exodus, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, Numbers, it all talks about this feast. Could also be called the Feast of Harvest, Day of First Fruits. And it's a little bit confusing because different uh, books of the Bible say slightly different things. But there was a 50 day count, 
and it got the name Festival of Weeks because there was seven weeks and seven days. <coughs> now, originally it was tied to agriculture, that <coughs> when there was a barley harvest, <coughs> which coincided with Passover, you count 50 days to the wheat harvest, which was Pentecost. <coughs> now, over time, because that got a little bit confusing, Jewish teaching tied Passover and Pentecost together as 50 days apart. Now, this this, of course, is, is all part of the Old Covenant. And the Old Covenant in Exodus 19, verse 5, God said, Now if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession." Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Right, now under this old covenant, they were enslaved in Egypt and it was time for them to be delivered and freed. And so came Passover. Now, <coughs> under Passover, there was a Passover lamb slaughtered at twilight and the blood of the lamb put around the door frame of the house in which they lived. And then that night when the angel of the Lord came by, if he saw the blood around the door frame, it would pass over and everyone would be safe, their lives would be spared. It was only the firstborn that were in question. <clears throat> and that was the thing that broke the hard heart of Pharaoh because he lost his son. Now, under Jewish teaching, 50 days later was the giving of the law, Ten Commandments. So forth. Now, you won't find that written in the Bible. I, I had a look and I couldn't find it. But there are a few clues. Um, <clears throat> turns out it took them about six weeks to get from Egypt to Mount Sinai. It was perhaps a few days and then God gave them three days notice to, to come and meet him on the mountain where he gave the law. So 50 days is, is, is quite conceivable. <clears throat> so now let's look at the new covenant, which is what we're talking about and what we know as Pentecost. <clears throat> In Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 to 33, it says, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will be like the covenant I made with their ancestors. I'm sorry, it will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant, though I was like a husband to them declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. So that was the new covenant. Now there are actually a lot of parallels between the old covenant and the new one. Um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 Paul describes uh, Christ as our Passover lamb. Now, 
this occurs if, from, if you recall back to our um, Eastern meditations, this occurred just before Passover. And then Jesus was resurrected after the Sabbath, which was the commencement of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, where people would come with the first fruits of their harvest, and the priest would wave it before the Lord so that those who offered it would be accepted. Now, on this resurrection day, <coughs> Now Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, 20, but in fact Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Now he was the first fruits, there would be many to follow, but each in his own order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. That includes us. He was the first fruits. Many of us will follow. Seven weeks later was Pentecost, where God, by His Holy Spirit, would write His law on their minds and the hearts of His people. Hence, Christians celebrate Pentecost Sunday seven weeks after Easter Sunday. <clears throat> now, the Jews still celebrate Pentecost, <clears throat> or they, they might call it Shavuot, meaning weeks, um, but they don't celebrate today because they have a different calendar. Um, in fact, this year the Passover was Monday, the 22nd of April. Their Pentecost will be Tuesday, the 11th of June. So they haven't celebrated it yet. So now, let's go back to what happened <coughs> at what we read about in Acts chapter 2. Now, the Holy Spirit was poured out on the believers. Um, it doesn't say who they all were, whether it was the apostles or all the believers, it, quite possibly the apostles, because it said Peter stood up with the eleven. And they spoke in foreign languages they had never learned nor spoken before. Between the mighty rushing wind, the mighty rushing wind, and those filled with the Holy Spirit, all speaking at once, there was such a racket that people came to see all the commotion about was about, and heard people speaking in their own language, regardless of what country or language of origin. Peter then spoke to the crowd. And he said to them, this Jesus that you crucified, <coughs> God has made him Lord and Messiah. Well, some of the people may well have seven weeks before been in the crowd calling out, Crucify him. Crucify him. So now they thought he really was the son of God. He's now sitting at the right hand of God. We're in a lot of trouble. <clears throat> and so they said to Peter, what can we do? He had a simple answer for them. Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all the Lord our God will call. Now 
knowing that one day 3,000 people accepted this message and were baptised. A big day. <coughs> and that number of people were added to the number of believers at the beginning of the church. <coughs> now, these people were all Jews. They weren't Gentiles. <coughs> but the promise is no longer just for the Israelites, but for all who repent and are baptised in the name of Jesus Christ. We have promised the forgiveness of sins and the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And uh, Doug read to us a little earlier from the prophet Joel, indicating that the time had come for God's Spirit to be poured out on all people, young and old, male and female, bond and free, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So, what do you think might have happened after Pentecost? Well, as always, God's timing was perfect. It was a requirement from way back that all male Jews were to present themselves to, to God three times a year and at, at a place that God, God would determine. At that time it was Jerusalem and so people came from far and wide into Jerusalem. And that's why there was such a crowd. <coughs> the gift was given and people had come from places that we know as Libya, Egypt, Syria, Lebanon, Arabia, Iraq, Iran, Italy, Crete and Turkey. And these people were going to go back home. Potentially thousands of them. They came as faithful Jewish pilgrims. They left as baptised believers, born again, filled with the Holy Spirit. They went home to their family, their friends, their neighbours, their colleagues. and could tell them about the Gospel of Christ, what happened to them on the day of Pentecost, and in their own language. Now, Australia was unheard of at that time, but the Gospel has come to us, and the Holy Spirit has come to us through our repentance and baptism. Let us not let, let the gifts of the Holy Spirit go to waste. <clears throat> there has been no temple in Jerusalem for 1,954 years. The Romans destroyed it in AD 70. God is no longer confined in the Holy of Holies of the temple but is now in the hearts and minds of his people. In 1 Corinthians 6, 19, Paul says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, who you have received from God? You are not your own. Spiritual gifts are given to us not for our glorification, but to equip us to do the task that God has called us to do within the church. <clears throat> you recall that Jesus told his apostles to wait in Jerusalem 
to receive the gift that God has promised. Can you imagine what would have happened if they hadn't have done that? If they just went off and did everything in their own strength, they would have missed this great opportunity that they were presented with at Pentecost. Let us be thankful that we do not have to approach the task that we have been given in our, in our own strength, but in the power of his spirit. Amen. Thank you, Graham. That was wonderful. Oh, I didn't grow as tall as Graham. <laughs> Thank you. That was wonderful. As we sing the next song, All Over the World, the Spirit is Moving, we'll take up our offering for the work of the Lord here and afar. us as we offer ourselves to serve you in different ways and to praise you in many voices. Send your spirit upon us that when we speak the word of your love, people may hear and understand as on that day of Pentecost so long ago. This we pray in the name of Jesus, our Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated and we invite Pauline to bring us our prayers for others. Good morning, and let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the compassion that you have placed in all our hearts, that we can open our minds and use this time to think about and to pray for the others. On this day of Pentecost, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit to help keep us in one spirit and purpose and in your love and peace. We pray for the churches worldwide, for those worshipping in open churches and those worshipping in secret places. Lord, we lift up our compassionate people who faithfully serve their communities by coming alongside children 
young people and their families in their time of need. Like Mission Australia, who in the Bay are helping at least 50 families and caring for their needs. The Food Barn, who do such a wonderful job in our community and of course our helping hands. Thank you for their skills, their commitment and their willingness to share your love. We thank you Lord that we're able to come together tonight as a combined churches to celebrate the Pentecost together, one love in your one unity. We thank you Lord for the answered prayers for this church building and this church premises. You have kept us safe from vandalism and from damage for a while. We thank you that you heard our prayers and we still do pray for those that were involved, that they have found their peace of mind and have had a change of heart experience. Lord, we are often lost for words or lost how to pray for the war affected countries, those experiencing turmoil and conflict. We pray for these leaders of these countries, grant them wisdom to correct their ways, courage to make a change, bravery to step down from their prideful ways and to humble themselves to see their wrongs. We pray for those in Gaza that heard the news of the three hostages where the other bodies have been found. Be with these families suffering from the loss. Give them the peace that only you, Lord, can provide. May they not be eaten up with anger or filled with desire for revenge or hatredness. We continue to pray for the battles intensifying in the Gaza Strip and Russia still fighting with Ukraine. Our hearts and minds can feel overwhelmed by the immense challenges affecting people all around the world. Save us from our ever-closing minds and hardening of our hearts to see the many, many needs around us. We pray for those whose suffering seems to be endless, for families destroyed by jealousy, for those people that waste their time talking about others when they should be really looking at themselves, for those that are involved in family violence, give them the protection that they need. For the homeless, please help them find shelter, especially for those that are looking but see no hope. And many are affected by natural disasters, floods, droughts and forest fires. Many are struggling with poverty and the global food crisis. And we pray in advance for safety with the expected rain that is forecasted for our lands. O oh Lord, we pray for your provision, your peace and your protection. Loving Lord, we lift up those who are suffering in body, mind or spirit. So many people are facing all kinds of health trials. As a church family, we pray for Lorraine. We know that healing is on the way and we pray for Doug and Lorraine to see them through the challenges that they must be going through. We pray for others who are waiting for a procedure, those that have had tests and waiting for results. Can we all just take one moment to pray for those that you know who need healing, this may be spiritually or physically. Lord, hear our prayers. We thank you for the real life opportunities that you give to us to offer support and love to those in their days where they mostly struggle, frustration and pain. We ask for your peace and joy of your spirit. For those uncertain how to use their time, their talents and their gifts, we ask for the love and the courage of your spirit. For those reaching out to others with the good news of Christ, we ask for assurance of your spirit to know your presence with us in their daily lives. In our relationships, in our worship and in our times of joy and pain, Holy Spirit, be with us and help us. And in the name of Jesus, as he taught us, let us continue with the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now I invite Graham up to lead us in the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all today and forevermore. Amen. But before we go from this place, we do have one more song. But I would like to thank Sue for all the help she gave me in enabling me to do... <laughs> Friends are horrible creatures, aren't they? <laughs> uh, and also to the whole of the body of Christ for the prayers. We do appreciate them. Okay, so our final song is one we sang two verses thereof last week with Nathan. And I did ask him, would he mind if, he, if we left the third verse till today? And he was very gracious and said it was very fitting. So it's go forth in his name and you'll notice in the third verse we come to the spirit is moving. So let's stand if we're able and sing our final song, go forth in his name.
beautiful. And as you go over to morning tea, I did say that I made you a cake, but there was no way in the world I could get the batter into the pan without my spare pair of hands. So... <laughs> Stand next to him like a candle to the sun.